I recently traveled out to Long Beach, California to watch a live in-person lesson with the number ninth ranked golf coach in America, Dana Dahlquist. Dana also happens to be a member of our team over on hitbombs.com. And in this lesson, you're gonna learn how Dana diagnoses certain issues in the swing, drills to fix those issues, and how he tailors the lesson to the individual in front of him. Dana has worked with a lot of golfers ranging from beginner golfers all the way up to PGA Tour winners. Stay tuned. I think this is something that will help coaches, players, and all golfers that wanna get better. Okay, so today we have Greg. We're gonna improve his driver. Um, right now, swing direction too far right. We do want to get more club head speed, a little more height on the club or on the ball, a little less, would you say, like arm pull look. And so what we first did is, first lesson was to get your mass to move because his mass was too centered. And now, and then the second move was to kind of get him out of this look and more into getting pressure into the trail leg and getting him a little more up in his backswing. And, and the reason why I want the up for two, so we can drop it, that's number two. Um, and then today we're gonna look at, through the transition, what he does. So this is gonna be a fun one. I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the issues that Dana saw in Greg's swing at the start of the lesson. And I'm gonna do my best to try to replicate this. In the backswing, the rates of the pelvis rotation were a little quick, so he had a lot of pelvis rotation. Upper body moved too far to the trail side. And because he was too far over the trail side in the downswing, as he started down, he would pull his arms towards the target in an effort to try to control low point. As you can see in some of his swings, what started happening is to offset that, Greg started creating a lot of extension, okay? So a little bit of excessive extension to offset the fact that his pelvis was rotating too quickly. So really the, the pelvis movement in the early stages of the backswing was, was the low hanging fruit, which is exactly what Dana attacked first. We are gonna get to him dropping the mass and then creating some load and separation. But the key to this is that when you separate, you're not over here, okay? Because you like to go this way pretty heavy. Um, so yeah, go ahead and hit two more. What were yeah. some ways you guys uh, got out of this look here? Getting got him a little bit more. Yeah, so like on gasp, it would look like his center mass didn't move first off. Okay. So like getting him to move pressure left to right and then getting more vertical force out of his right side, um, get more frontal plane torque, right? Yep. So frontal plane torque moving this way um, to get him into a position that actually lengthens his backswing. That was a big thing. Um, we do have some restrictions in his right foot that at Urban Golf he got an assessment on. So we're treading lightly on the right hip for right now, okay? Because when, here's the problem. Because your right foot isn't where you want it and you can't use the outside of your foot real well and the big toe, those are like the two, you can't get into the right glute the way we want. Now, that's not gonna hold you back until after you're like 120 miles per hour. So don't worry. Um, when we get into that range, then, then it starts to become more important because you need a better established break. But the main thing for you, because you play tournaments, is that you can find it and hit in the air and be happy. It's not like I wanna swing 120, but I have a swing direction that's going five to the right. Okay, so, all right, go ahead and hit and we'll take a look. I think the first one that I took here is a really good example. Yeah, so that one's gonna look just like this. So, so come on over here, and this is you right here. Okay, so let's, let's, let's look what's better. Okay, so we have lift and we have sway. So pelvis sway right here. So off the ball, I could already tell you went down. Okay, but you move to the right too. Chest maybe one inch out of regular. Okay, but it's fine. Chest, but all your bends are good. Pelvis lift. Zero, so you didn't go down, mm -hmm. okay? Um, chest lift, 0.4, so that's better. So you had a little more awareness, by the way, of not going down, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is good. You go more up. Yeah, um, now right okay. around here, this is where this should start getting negative, about P3, and that is better. But 
The issue still remains that's a little bit too far to the right, the upper axis, mm -hmm. roughly. And I would say if you look at like the pelvis bend, it needs to be a little bit more tilt in that, but only a couple degrees. And then through the transition, you definitely need to keep retraction in your scap. And let's look at your right foot and left foot. Not bad, better. Like that heel's not going closer to that foot. Mm -hmm. That's what was happening before. That's closer. Um, but see how the, the left hip is a little too high to the right? Mm -hmm. And if we look at this position here, pelvis to chest, your chest is too far back relative to your pelvis. Mm -hmm. So you need this upper hub to feel like when you go through the transition to be more on top. Mm -hmm. So that's still too much horizontal drive. You ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take your setup. Okay, so let's kind of work on that whippy club feel for a minute. Yeah, so even, even, even longer, leave that thing back. Yep, kind of like that. Now when you do it, don't go forward, just push open and feel your right hip stays high. Kind of like that's your feel. Okay, you ready? Okay, let's do a few like that. Keep going, don't worry about where the ball goes. Keep doing that. So Dana, are you attacking the, the pelvis, the lateral and the pelvis right now first? Yeah, so lateral, so he's gonna, here's, here's kind of the pickle. The pickle's gonna be is that he's gonna probably not get enough into that hip that he should. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of awareness, like the right hip is high through the transition. Hopefully, like it's one of these things like, oh, jump here, maybe I'll get it ahead of time, right? Like if my awareness is to jump five feet forward and I'm only jumping two, well, there's my goal is jump five feet. Maybe I'll get this to be a little bit higher, which will, i.e. keep him a little bit more centered. And then when he goes this way, keeping this retracted should keep this more on top. So from like a playability standpoint, that's number one. Okay, let me get one more from here. Uh, practice that swing again. So what did that feel like through the transition? Leave the whippy club up, less forward for me. Good, okay. Do like three like that, exaggerated. Yeah, lovely. So here's the good news. Good news is at the top, your upper chest is one inch back. Okay. That's way better than four. Yeah. <laughs> and your pelvis lift is down one. So you're golden. So normally before, like you're already pushing up. Mm -hmm. So you're actually starting to lower. Head lift, all, everything's better. So the only elephant in the room is that, which is contributing to your X factor. That's your right hip. So that's more of a training thing, mm -hmm. like maybe drill it, drill it, drill it. But for playing now at P5, that is better. See your right shoulder looks back, mm -hmm. so that's better. Uh, chest is less back, right? They're, they're trying to line up. That right hip, it's just not loaded. Yeah. That's kind of the, the issue. And it's not loaded to the top? Well, you don't know how to do that. But look, your left foot's actually jumping now. We'll get into some drills for that in a little bit. But yeah, we need to build awareness in your right hip and right foot to do that. But um, yeah, do a few more. I'm, I'm, even though that was like not a shot you want, yeah. um, that is better. And then see that angle there? Mm -hmm. That needs to come out. Yeah. So that's, in, that's directly related to you pushing out of the ground. Mm -hmm. So, um, We'll get to that also. Those are like the two elephants in the room. So one of the questions I asked Greg was, what were some of the findings in his body assessment over at Urban Golf? And one of the things he talked about is how his trail foot is actually collapsed. So there's no arch in that foot. But the interesting thing about that is when they tested his trail hip, his range of motion in his trail hip is pretty good. To my understanding of the body, and this could be wrong, so if there's any smarter PTs out there, uh, please leave a comment below if I'm incorrect. But to my knowledge, if that trail foot and ankle is collapsed, can pull this knee into a valgus, and a lot of times that can shut off that access to his right hip. So even though his right hip tested good, 
uh, it might be hard to access that range of motion based off how his trail foot is interacting with the ground. So when you had your assessment, what were some of the things they, they talked to you about with your body? The biggest thing was my lack of mobility in my feet. I have really flat feet, so I think it stems from that. Um, I think because of that, I'm not able to like use, you know, like load properly. Did they say you had issues with your trail hip as well? Um, well, the hip itself, no, but I like it all, like the hip itself is fine. It's just more of like, it originates like in the foot. Yeah. That's where like the real issue lies. Um, so like if I can kind of work on creating well, a bigger arch, it'll kind of help me use, use the ground a bit better. Right. 100%. Yeah, because you go into like, it's interesting, it's almost like a form of hip extension mm -hmm. on your backswing. Mm -hmm. So like when you start to go and you start to turn, it's like everything go, and this is kind of makes sense because of like your past, because everything kind of goes together. Mm -hmm. So like not everything's separating as you go back. Mm -hmm. Now in the hopes that this would separate mm -hmm. and load it, but then it just kind of goes, goes away. Mm -hmm. So we'll give you some drills for that. With, I, the problem is I don't want to give you a bunch of drills, but then you go play in a tournament and then you lose this. And if this is back, it doesn't matter. Like you're going to hit it whoosh, yeah. everywhere. So you kind of have to tread lightly on that. This is one of the, for tournament players, this is where you kind of have to be careful. It's like, I want to, I want to do stuff in the gym that influences that getting better. Mm -hmm. And then as I'm hitting balls, I want to be able to see it go this way. And then they parlay on top of each other. Mm -hmm. But if you get this to happen, you go back to that and that which no bueno. Um, were you, were you, you said swing direction was too far into out? Way too far into out, yeah. Well, you were missing balls, blocking balls, right? Yeah, mostly just big push fades. What were some of his swing direction numbers? Like upwards of six? Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was that with a pull down. So it was like that. So this closed, this under, that way. So all that was better. But I, I still want you to keep feeling like that's the whippy club up there loaded, and then that's on top and driving. Yeah. Okay, so and then you say like whippy club, it's like letting this like keep going back. Yeah, as, as down. yes, as you go straight down, not forward, down and drive, and then we're gonna start slowing the hands down here in a minute. We're gonna add a phase this in a minute, just so the ball gets in the air. Yeah. Okay. That was actually a better right hip. Okay, one more. Sweet. Drill one, is there anything in this? Okay, this is a med ball. He and I have been doing this for a long time in schools, okay? Um, imagine this is a med ball. So we gotta, we gotta understand like what feedback is gonna be good for you and what feedback's not gonna be good for you. So sometimes, like if your issue was not having enough width on your backswing, then I might throw and maybe finding a break, which this could help you, would be if I went this way and this way. Mm -hmm. Problem is, is like you need, like your number one thing is to push off this foot. Yeah. And in competition, your backswing gets short. Like every time you get a pitcher, you're swinging like in a tournament, you're like, I'm taking it back this far. So you need to get the system to allow that to happen. So you're gonna throw your med ball left side of you on the ground okay so if i went like this and i still do the counter so it's here here push you're going to throw the thing over there okay. so a lot of times with this backpack drill we'll use a med ball with a string on it called the tornado ball we'll use a very light one um, but a backpack works really good and what I really liked about this drill is it was cueing Greg out of the opposite of what he was doing. So remember what we talked about. In the backswing, Greg had a lot of pelvis rotation. Upper body was too far to the trail side. So if we cue the golfer to feel like they're winding up and they're gonna throw that backpack down into the left, that's gonna force the lower body to reorganize under the upper body so that when we land, the upper center is on top of the lower center at P5. This is not only important for compressing the ball, it's really important for maintaining wrist angles through the transition as well. Nope, you're gonna throw it over your back. Oh. Yeah, now here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna notice for you to do that, you gotta soften your arms, let the system retract. This way. Yeah, okay. hit the ground. 
By the way, where'd your upper hub go? It stayed in that bend, right? Right, and this retracted. Right. Yeah, you can't do it like yeah. boarded. Yeah. Okay, do that again. Yeah. But this has to go. And then you're gonna get good at it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when you jump. Mm-hmm. So it's like slamming. It's all right. Then try to leave those up. <laughs> yeah. This is drill two. Do you have one of these? No. Okay, so this is drill two. So set up with that. With a counter. And then when you go up there, I want you to feel like you're slamming. You're going to literally slamming down and left. When I say left, it doesn't mean get left. It just means pressure left. Okay. I feel that keeps, it's loading yeah. while you're doing that. Changing directions. Good. Just leave it there and leave it retracted. Done. Okay, so we have an orange whip here. Um, this one's a little shorter than the one Dana was using on the day of the lesson. But what Dana wanted from this drill was he wanted the weight of the orange whip to essentially load the trail arm back behind. Okay, what this is going to do is that's going to help keep the upper body a little bit more on top of the lower body. Okay. Get the lead heel moving forward and down, okay? And set Greg up to have a little bit of lower body movement out ahead of the upper body, okay? So ultimately, what Dana was trying to achieve was heel lands forward, lower body's open, and then he wanted the upper body stacked on top of the lower body so that eventually Greg could push off that lead side. Good. So you're pre-shot thing that you've been doing looks really, really good. The only problem is that the handle is so freaking far ahead when you're demonstrating it because you've probably done that for a long time. So probably what happened is you get a lot of balls and then you try to hold, like keep the handle face somewhere in front of you, I guess you would say. I don't know how to describe that, but you need to stop doing that to get the ball in the air. So when you do what you do to hit the ball in the air, and if you were to do this, the upper hub has to go back to match it. So as we got deeper into the lesson, Greg started to make some really nice changes. What we started to notice is through the transition, as Greg was landing, his upper body was on top of the lower body. Now, the problem from here is he had a lot of handle drag, okay? And what this did was it brought the launch of the golf ball down significantly. So Dana started working heavily on how Greg was using his lead side. He was cueing him through the transition to feel like once he landed forward to get this left leg up and around, almost like he was trying to rip the turf. And what you'll find is if you do that correctly by impact, you'll actually see this lead leg fully extended, okay? If we do that, it's gonna pull up a little bit on the handle, which is not only gonna speed the club head up, it's going to also square the face and bring the launch up as well. So do your backswing real quick and land. And we're just gonna give you like a different input. Good, so go ahead and start your transition. Good, now as you're doing that, okay, that's too far. See where the club head is in your hands? So that's P6. Boom, so you drop. Now keep all that wrapped up. Now as you start to push and jump that way, that's pushing toe to heel up, straightening. This is driving. Mm -hmm. This is actually just stopping. That's what's gonna line this thing up. So as you feel this happen, you're gonna feel that line up. So you gotta, you gotta slow this down to speed that up. Mm -hmm. That's what's gonna put loft on the club. And that's gonna be your matchup that'll allow this to be here and not here and then drag to eternity. Way earlier, like here. Like this is just, you're stopping your hands. Good, done. You just push and let it go. So stretch. Yep. Okay. Okay, that's not bad. Okay, I'm gonna film that. And then we'll create a drill out of this one too, because you'll you'll need this one in your right hip drill. So earlier, so look, like you go like this, it's already down and then boom. Okay, jump. <laughs> that, 
So it's like you're jumping with a stretch that's established. More, way more. Like jump, actually jump. Jump and drive the right hip, leave it stretched. Kind of like that. You're gonna like this pitcher a lot better. Really? Yeah. Like normally your swing is this short. Yeah. So that's good. Everything's good. Why does the pelvis say so? Well, because you went so long, so it appears to look that way, but you're down, you're down. So that, that looks good. So, I, I mean, I think backswing looks fine. So slam, more. So see how there's more separation? Look at your hip. Yeah. Right? Left hip's way better. Uh, we'll go to P5, much better. This trail side needs to stay loaded longer. So keep, keep that loaded back as you do it. Right knee's already better. They're on top of each other. Like when you say keep this loaded, like keep this further. Just leave it back, your scat back okay. and everything back loaded. You loaded the shaft and now you're pushing out of the ground early. So now you have room for your right hip, foot's coming off the ground. You're actually under slid, which is great, right? You have an X factor now, finally. Now see how that handle over there is still driven too forward? Yeah. So that's directly affected by you jumping off the ground. And when there's a ball there, that should line up. Mm -hmm. But that's trending. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. That should be like your pre-shot yeah. thing. I mean, you're at least getting internal rotation on that trail foot too. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Do that. Do that with a ball. So you gotta somehow get the club out in front of you early, but not not like that with you pushing out of the ground and staying loaded. That's the trick. So the trick is how do I get the club? back out here without doing that, because yeah. that doesn't work. If you try to do it physically, it doesn't work, because you're shutting this down. Driving open yeah. and pushing the vertical force this way will line that thing up. Right. Then don't worry if it's pushing back or, or away, because you're already on top of yeah. it, right? That's kind of the pickle. No, jump. <laughs> don't do that rehearsal, yeah. So, so you got to feel like all this is, this is just the, the way you're going to do this. So go ahead and go up there. So this is all loaded. This is all loaded. Now make your transition. Done. See how it's loaded like that? Yeah. Okay. So this is stretched. Mm -hmm. This is stretched. Now, right hip a little more. There you go. Now leave that stretch. Okay. Now jump and let it get in front of you. Kind of like that. See how that was like really that way? Yeah. So you're, but this is on top. Now, okay, get the club in front of me. Yeah. Lines it up. Okay, ready? I don't care where these go. We'll start doing club head speed here in a second, but this is just basic parameters. Okay, ready? One more time. What do you think on that, yay or nay? It was earlier. Okay, one more time. That was earlier. Earlier what, landing? Or? Yeah, earlier push. It wasn't like this. Okay, do it one more time. Leave it retracted and then jump. Okay, let's take a look. So we can agree you can use more frontal plane torque on your backswing. Yeah, for sure. Could be more. Mm -hmm. See, so you loaded. So that's kind of the indicator that you're down and right with your upper axis. Mm -hmm. That precursor can't happen because then you're never going to get that close to zero again. Yeah. So then as you start. That's the chest moving too far to the to other side. The, yeah. And then when he pushes, it's just way back. Right? So you did line it up better. Mm hmm but everything's just too far back. Yeah. Okay. That's where those high rights come from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do it again. It's like marrying the two. So like, uh, I'm gonna be very, very fair for right now. So you're around 112, 113. So like you can play if you can find it. Yeah. Doesn't mean you can't 
add speed to what you're doing. But we need, I mean, that was faster. That was 113. It wasn't 111, 112. Um, and it was faster because you decelerated the hands. That's where the speed's coming from. The speed's coming from two areas, you rotating and pushing. That's where these two things are kind of matching up, but you're not gonna find it if that's too far to the right. That was better. Ta-da, better. Do you understand why that's faster though? Because from here I can I yes. lane and then just rip open. Yep. Like if I'm too far right, then... You're, you gotta push horizontally. Instead of vertically. Yeah, yeah, so like, I think for the people at home, like I demonstrate real quick. So like your issue, you look at a golf, here's the problem with your mind too, because I'm in the same boat that you're in. So this is not a shot against you, it's a shot against me, trust me. So like you look at a golf swing and you're like, oh my God, like there's a lot going on that I need to do. But like, what's the first domino? So if the first domino is you push to oblivion this way, okay, for too long, you're gonna push that way as well. Or you could go like that or whatever, right? But it's some form of that. That's why you pull on the handle because the radius is too far away from the ball. Like just in relative terms, like my brain knows as a good player where, where this is at all times. So if I go like this and I go, like I can't get to it. So you blast this off. So that's the first thing. So once you get that under control, where you start pushing, push, push, push this way as much as you can, and you're up, you're not down, you can then go down. Like that, that you have to have, like for sure. Um, so there's really two things that he's working on. Mm -hmm. So the first one is trying to make sure that he doesn't mm -hmm. overspin his pelvis too quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where you were trying to feel more like to your right side and then up, mm -hmm. am I correct? Yeah. yeah. And then the second one is getting him back to his lead side to be able to use the left leg yeah. to then get the wrist angles out. Correct, yeah. So if you, if you make that like your baseline, everything's better. So I'm gonna allow you to do, cause those aren't bad, that's pretty good. I'm gonna have you do two more, then we're gonna, we're gonna put a little focus on club head speed and around the protocols that you're doing, that's gonna be the fun one. Because like, are you physically able to manage that? The one thing that's not, we haven't really discussed was like, how do you add speed to what you're doing? Okay, how tall are you? Five. Okay. Don't say it like that. Five eight. <laughs> there you go. That's better. <laughs> okay. Um, so you're like the perfect height to play on tour. Five eight, five nine is pretty much like the the number. Okay. Um, but you're missing some speed. Where do you think that comes from? I think a lack of vertical force. Okay. Horizontal. Okay. Um, Good. Handle drag. Good. Okay. How do I? how would I put more force into my system? Because you're already working on creating vertical force. Like, where would I find it? More force in the backswing. That's really, really good. Um, how, what's a really good way of doing that? Taking it back faster. What's a good way of doing that? Starting up here. Or moving your mass forward first and then hitting the brakes on it. Because right. here's the issue, okay? And this is why I'm doing it with you this way because your way of getting your mass to the right was to stay in forward bend for eternity, right. right? And then push it that way. So if you got here and you go, okay, I'm just gonna get a bigger counter. Like, see how I just move the center of mass forward? Yeah. Then I can break it as I go back. So Josh is gonna demo for you because he hits it really short, okay? So, and you're on film, if that's all right. He's not gonna hit, he's just gonna show you. With this, or? It doesn't matter. So watch him do it. So he's gonna go. Yeah. So do do just the first piece real quick for okay. me. See that how it's like forward and then he pushes it? Mm -hmm. And then he breaks it. So boom, boom. Mm -hmm. So I don't wanna see any of this off the ball. So what's the, f nope, forward move. Good, there, good. Now, because there's no ball there, let the club, so so go and throw that, right? Now throw right, done. Now throw that back. Yeah, and that'll help your right side. Because here's kind of the issue. So everything wants to go together in the past, 
okay? Everything wants to just spin. But this will delay that. So what will happen if I go here and I hit the brake, well, now I just activated that. And we have a drill we'll show you later for that. Then you're able to throw that back. Now you get separation, okay? So try that again. Yeah. Now to me, like if I was playing, like you're gonna go play, that'd be a good like practice move. Right. Cause you know like, oh, there's my break. Yeah. And Done. Push back the other way. Correct, yeah. Cause right now if you're here and you don't do that, well, where's my break? Yeah, is it here, is it here, is it, oh, I went too far. That's better, good. And then do that again. As soon as you feel that down left, jump. Good, a little bit more. That first part? Yep, just make it too much. Good, and can you make your arms a little more? <laughs> I don't know if that's technically the, the correct term, but a little soften up. Floss, there you go, floss it. <laughs> All right, let's see it. So I want you to have that feel. Now the club's not gonna go. Yeah. The club will just, let it just be there and go left, right, and go. Just nuke it. I mean, go left. Go, go left more. That was like, don't wanna do it. <laughs> like left, like literally left, okay. slam the brakes. And then leave that retraction feeling. Yep. Good. As soon as you slam the brake, throw the frontal plane torque in. Good job. <laughs> That's better. That's a little quicker. Speed go up? Yeah. Does this feel kind of wild? Okay, so if you speed train, this is kind of how you want to be. Like that feeling of move the mass, move the mass, yeah. Yeah. Ball speed is almost 70 now, instead of like 63. What's his, att what's his attacking goal on average? Two oh, down? now? No, two up now. R originally two down? Yeah. There we go. At a boy. So um, it's a pretty linear discussion. So like, how do you maximize your ability to do that? Well, now you do have the precursor set to do that. So what you would do is you go, okay, I wanna be perfect. I take my setup, I get into this, you know, my proper right bend, and then you can't find your break. Mm -hmm. It's like, it just keeps going. Yeah. One of the drills that Josh and I were talking about behind your back was one of those drills. Um, that'll help you up the speed. Now right. it's, it's, a, it's a, always a conversation of like, gotta find the ball and hit it really far. Yeah. So, so we know like, okay, if I'm filming and you have sports box, so you can see at P5 if your centers are at P5 properly. And you can see at P4 if you're too far to the right with your upper hub. So it's like, okay, I can keep adding to my system energy and keep those precursors under control. Yeah. If you can do that, you can keep layering speed into it. But you need to go, okay, I need to establish brakes so that I can get enough frontal plane torque in my backswing so I can find the golf ball. Yeah. And then counter is getting the center mass to move left yeah. so I can do that. Because if you set up and it's too far right, it's like, well, where is it? Yeah. Right, I can't find it. And how do I find the brake without the counter? Or should there oh, you're gonna probably end up having one. Rory's pretty good at it. Right, it's like you can lessen it, but if it's if it's there, you can always lessen it if you need to. Yeah. It's not like you're gonna take a seven iron and do a bunch of it, but you just kind of feel, oh, I'm left to center, boom, there. Gotcha, okay. Right, they all do it. Yeah, yeah, just to a lesser degree. Yeah, but always train more so you can find less. Right. Don't just, don't eliminate it. <laughs> Elimination is bad. Okay, two more like that. Sick, much better. Where's your clubhead speed normally, Greg? A 11 to 12, okay. 13 maybe. Good. 
Okay, last one. There you go. Cool. High five. Much better. Okay, we're going to call this the Eisman drill. Okay. Because okay. a friend of ours who's in um, our group, essentially, has been doing testing on this. Okay. So um, we're going to do it with this. So I'll have Josh kind of show you. All right, so you're just going to stand on it. So take your address. Now just imagine that like you have to put tension in the towel. So you can put tension in the towel this way, uh -huh. away. So when you stand on it, push it apart. Yeah, I feel and like you're ripping it. Just yeah. rip it to shreds. Yep. Okay, now take your address. Don't lose that. Keep that tension in the ground. Keep pushing it. Okay, now I'm going to move this out of the way so we don't kill it. Now as you do it, create a counter and keep that tension and stop at P2. Now see how like what's what you're feeling underneath your right foot? Do you feel it? Yeah. Push. Yeah. That's gonna improve your right femur, your right hip. The key is to keep constant tension on it too, because like don't let it go. Yeah, if you're if you're pushing with this foot this way and you're pushing with that, then it's creating like stability almost. So like you're here, it's it's stabilizing. Now you could rotate. Rotate, rotate, ro rotate without just kind of like spinning. It's right. almost like when the when this just spins, like you're you're losing that that pushing yeah. motion in both right. directions. This is why your pelvis doesn't have enough bend in it because you just spin the hips right. and there's not enough load in the trail right. glute. Now whether that's entirely from the foot, it's an indicator for sure. You know, I think it's it's a contributor. Yeah. But at least training this in there. I mean, I don't know the exact numbers that John has when he's tested this, but it's significant. Torque values usually go up. They go up. So even at a dress, like before you move it, keep it there and keep pushing it apart. You feel that? Yeah. Keep doing it. You're gonna feel like you're, you're spreading the towel all the way to like, the top, all the way through the transition. Feeling like, like it's very much in like the glute. Yay. Yeah. 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 That's what we want. <laughs> Not anterior. Good. Now go to P5 and keep it retracted when you do that. You still pushing it apart? Push, 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 push. There you go. That's a nice left hip. That was the best your left hips looked. There you go. Pretty. Then, so you do those three things and then just keep jumping, yeah. okay? I don't wanna overload you on too much stuff. Like we can talk about like direction of jump. You gotta jump probably to the left more, not up and back. Yeah, because um, based off your old pattern, which was kind of like this way, yeah. you're pushing this way and not ideal, right? Like you're up and left or your, your two that I remember, like you, you push this way a lot. You wanna try hitting a few with that feel on the ground? Pretty nice, kiddo. Okay. And I want your angle attack to come down. Yeah, I want you at two. Four ups. That's the upper body, right? Yeah. Like the more the upper body's this way. Yeah, yeah. I just feel like when I at least feel level, like I'm gonna hit it head high. Right, why? I have so much lean. Bingo. Because I'm too far back. Correct. Yeah, it's like you're, I, that's what I mean. Like if you went out and play golf right now, you're gonna hit it this high. Yeah. Like, I don't care. Like at the end of the day, like, this is a good conversation. So can I show you? So this is just from like the kinematics of golf. So people really worry about where their hands are, right? And rightfully so, like too far in, too far out, I get it. But let's think of the upper hub for a minute. So if the upper hub is too far to the right, where, where's the hands? Where's the club? Back. Right, right. So I don't care like what the pitch of the shaft is. But if this is on top of P5, I could be here, here. I don't give a, I don't care. Yeah. It doesn't matter, right? But if I if my tilts are off, like that has more to do where the center of the hands are, mm -hmm. right? So everybody's like looking at this. It's like, okay, like I don't care about that. Guys play from, Rory plays from here. Yeah. But his upper hub is like perfect. Right? So they're like, oh, Rory needs to be more here. It's like, really? Like, 
he stripes. Like, who cares? So, but for you, if this gets back, this is jammed, then you have to drag it down and stall. Yeah. Like, that's not good. Like, get this on top. Like, you'll figure this part out yeah. at some point. And I think they kind of feed into each other. I feel like, you know, when I think like, oh, I need to hit it higher, I like do this more, and yeah. then it adds even more to this. Yeah. It's just like and Then you hit a high, pounding high push cut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Good? Yeah. That's what you need to do. Yeah. A little bit lower angle of attack. Yeah. And that comes from this being further forward. Uh-huh. That's why I like the counter a little more too, because if I go like this, and this center moves here first, it's easier to hit the brake and then not have it. If I set here and then go here, it's like, well, wait a minute, now I'm too far over here. Yeah. Right? Now it depends, like, if he wants to do that, it's fine, because he's trying to hit up on it. How, what's your angle of attack when you go long drive? I try to keep it a little more, uh, well, it's it's like seven up, but that's down relative to other guys. Right, right. But same thing, I, I'm i always, I'm, I'm trying to keep an eye on my angle of attack, because if, if I see it starting to get too far up, I know I'm I'm doing what you're doing. Yeah. So you could, you could always just kind of monitor that with numbers looking at. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. your guy's pattern, everybody has a pattern. Right? It's actually pretty similar. Very similar, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so some guys are not, they're the opposite. It's like they they just want to, <laughs> yeah. they kind of go like this. And that's kind of like the, the feel that I've sort of been having is just like, you know, since I go too far right, is like go straight into that. But like you said, there's like no. There's diminishing returns. And there's like no break on that. Yeah. Yeah, diminishing returns. So like the diminishing returns is like, okay, I'm gonna keep everything still. Now granted, we're not talking about you, you play f for a living, right? So if you're a guy who doesn't practice and you just wanna go like this and spin the hips and turn and stay forward, okay, fine. I have no problem with that, it's fine. But that number ain't changing as far as speed. I mean, it just did. It was like incrementally just went up. So like metrically at P4, you get to a longer position because of that too, like you have more range and you could decelerate the hands better and then speed it up. And that will go to like 18 to 20 when this gets good, not this. Xander does it, JT does it, and Rory does it, and DJ do it. Bryson obviously does it. I mean, come on, like none of them just I mean, Adam, I watched him yesterday. Adam's like, yeah. ready for it takes away because we're talking about his Cirque on irons. Right. He, he needs it, yeah. or he's not Adam Scott. I would say go more left and earlier break. Yeah, set up real quick. Okay, you ready? I'm just gonna give you a feel. So what's your left feel like when you go left? I want left. Like that left. See so yeah, how you spin open? Yeah. And then go. So you actually do get open. Yeah. Allow it. I, I think that's where you're like, there's some phase in there that you're not accepting. Yeah. You're like, I don't want to let it go. Like, just let it go. Exactly. And then immediately hit the brake. Yeah. Better. That was better. Do that again. Mm -hmm. Hit the brake and go frontal plane. Those are like the next two. Okay, so let's kind of cover some things then. So we can only add so much to the system because you got to play golf, okay? So the next phase, and I do think the towel thing is going to start helping you. It's going to help your X factor a lot. It's going to help your trail leg, trail glute because you just keep doing that a bunch. You'll, you're gonna, you will actually figure that out. You know, other people, maybe not that quickly. <laughs> you'll figure it out pretty quickly because you like to hit balls. The next phase of this is after you've gotten the frontal plane kind of like cooked in and you get zeros, you're gonna get better at dropping. You're already doing it, but you're gonna get faster right. at doing that. Right now, it's kind of like you don't know where it is. Yeah. The better that gets, the better this gets. So the better that this gets, the better that gets. Right. So it's that's gonna, like if I had a goal, 
it would be that. And all that's gonna do is allow this to stop faster or slow down this faster so this speeds up. Right. right now it's a little too conscious, but that's the beauty of training this. Like it's not good for you, it's not training in position so much. It's like it's a it's a cadence. Yeah, or just like a time. It's a yeah. timing thing. Um, so that's kind of what I would do.